Welcome to another day of Skills Not Pills. I think we are live on the feed. I am your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and uh, today I have with me the miraculous, amazing Kevin Ballister. Welcome, Kevin. And I'm talking to the miraculous, amazing Carrie Hummingbird. <laughs> so nice <laughs> of you to say that today. <laughs> <laughs> How, how's it going? Well, it's going, it's going, I was just talking briefly um, before we started the live about the energy going around right now. It's a little intense for all of us, I think. Uh, so just rolling with it, rolling yeah. with it. Yep. Yep. I went on a, I went on a walk today um, to, to deal with that as well. I know you want, you just got back from a hike. I just got back from my hike to deal yeah. with this um, weird <laughs> energy uh, going on. Uh, and I'm just sharing this out on my homepage so that uh, hmm. right now, join us. And so, um, you know, your story really, I met you, I don't know, a year ago or something and uh, at uh, the CIC. I can't remember what it stands for, but Creative Intersection, something like that. Creative Intersection Collective. Creative Intersection Collective here in Austin. Because there's so many like amazing conscious businesses and people out here in Austin. And uh, I met you at that group. And I was like so amazed by your story. And I remember when you came to talk, um, it was right around the time that I was realizing I needed to come out and speak about, you know, the skills, not pills idea. But I didn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't totally formulated yet for me. Like this was like, I think last year in the spring. And I met you and I was like, wow, that is really important information to share with people uh, that their brain, you know, about the nutrition your brain actually needs mm -hmm. and how powerful your brain is that it can heal itself. Because I knew in my own journey of healing my, my mind, because all of my stuff was in here, like everything, all the problems, you know, <laughs> my life was being driven by this thing. Yep. It's, it's pretty important. Uh, it does just about everything you do. This thing is playing a part in it. It's playing an important part. And, you know, for me, it was more um, realizing that the stories I was telling were causing trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a little bit of your journey. But a lot of your journey had to do with actually feeding the brain correctly. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. you, and you learned it through. So tell a little bit. Because I know you guys, he's already got this great interview on Skills Not Pills movement. So we're not going to duplicate that here. But we are going to share, you know, we're going to have a conversation here um, about it. You can get the full story, you know, when you log in uh, and sign up. It's going to be a replay on June 1st to 2nd uh, for free. So if you're concerned about the money, it's free June 1st to 2nd to watch it back. And uh, in the meantime, though, give us some snippets because, I mean, it's kind of freaking amazing what – it's really actually amazing what's happened to you and how you've – recovered they told you you couldn't like you're just yeah. you defied their logic <laughs> I agree it is amazing um and I am appreciative of every single day for the fact that I'm here and I'm able to smile and uh, and you know speak and connect with people and do things like this and do backflips yeah. off of um, Barton Springs uh diving board I saw you do Very that true. like you did a backflip <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually part of the neuro rehabilitation. So let me give people who don't know my story, let me give them just like the super short version. Yeah. Yeah. So seven years ago, I sustained a severe traumatic brain injury. I was given less than a 10% chance of recovery beyond a vegetative state. Um, I woke up and I was breathing through a tube, receiving nutrition through a tube. My left hand was totally flexed inward. I didn't eat, walk, or talk for months as I recovered. And um, a lot, a whole lot went into my recovery. You know, um, when you're in that place where it's like, oh man, everything's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finding the motivation is is really important. And then, and then uh, so... So a lot of people played into helping me to find that motivation. And I was eventually steered towards a nutritional protocol and I began to regain some clarity. And I was like, whoa, there's something to nutrition. <laughs> so I began to study 
you know, uh, digestion, metabolism, neurometabolism, mechanism, neuroplasticity, and anything I could do to give my brain the best shot to recover. And what I saw is that as I was introducing the nutrients that my brain needed for optimal function and repair, it was so much easier to get in the, the, the mindset that I need to be in. My anxiety was, was reduced enormously, you know, and um, all of this, this guilt and anxiousness and lost time and everything that, I mean, I was, I was out of commission. I lost, I have no memory of over a month of my life. And, and then I was in a severe brain fog for almost a year and the, the guilt and thoughts of like loss for lost time and, you know, inability on top of that. And just like getting past all of that. Um, it was, it was really cool to see how nutrition made, made my recovery so much more possible. Whereas if I were to choose medications, um, I, would, I, w- I would have felt okay in that time. It would have numbed some of the pain of being there, you know, some of the mental anguish. It would have numbed a lot of that, but uh, I wouldn't have gotten any better. And, um, and so I'm super appreciative to be where I'm at. I'm super appreciative to have the tools that I've gathered throughout my journey. The nutritional tools I put into a book called How to Feed a Brain. Um, and uh, the other tools, you know, we, we can talk about all sorts oh, of Oh, so many tools. Because it's just, what I like that you just said is how much determination it took on your part to keep trying new things and keep branching out and keep learning in order to find, um, you know, healing, incremental healing is what I'm really getting from you. Like it was incremental. Like you'd find a new tool, it would work, get you a little further and then you need something else, right? Like, or you get set back sometimes, especially with diet. Like, Sometimes be like, all right, I'm gonna try this dietary thing, and I'll be like, oh, that didn't feel good, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it didn't like, work. Like, uh, and so that's that's where you know how to feed a brain. I want to do. I wanted to create the the resources I wish I had throughout my recovery. So basically, take out all of that um, troubleshooting and trying to figure it out and put it into an easy to use uh, guide with, with printable handouts you can take to the grocery store and like have the nutrition aspect just dialed in. Because that's, that's an um, analogy I, I tell people is many connections in my brain have been damaged and I think of rebuilding those connections like building a bridge. And what do we need to build the bridge? We need supplies and we need skilled workers. So supplies would be the nutrition, the brain building nutrition, right? And the skilled workers would be the therapy, the targeted therapy, the mindset, the tools, the skills, not pills, right? And you actually had a bunch of different um, experts helping you along your journey of recovery. Like really well-known, renowned. Yeah, yeah. Experts. Some of some. Some of them just really, really amazing experts out there. Um, Dr. Alex Vasquez is, is huge on that. Dr. Dati Skrazian uh, indirectly helped me a whole lot. And he wrote the forward to my book as well. Um, so he wrote a book called Why Is In My Brain Working? And I'm a case study in that book. But, um, but what I was saying about the... the uh, bridge and the supplies and the skilled workers and the supplies skilled workers the skills and the supplies being the nutrition brain build nutrition and if you do all of the therapy have all the skills but you're not supplying the nutrients that your brain needs it's like having the best bridge architects the most skilled designers 
and artist workers and pulling up with a truckload of toothpicks and expecting them to build something. So it's really important. What I found was like supplying the nutrients just made it so much easier and and it actually made a lot of the skills needed to be done a lot easier to do. It's like supplying the tools to those workers so they can build more efficiently and effectively. I know that you have a passion for making sure that um, nutrition in hospitals is improved Mm -hmm. according to these nutrition protocols. Talk a little bit about that because I know you're doing some work with that right now. Yes. Yeah. So nutrition in hospitals, when you're unable to eat conventionally in a hospital setting, the conventional feeds ingredients are usually corn syrup, soy protein isolate, corn maltodextrin, calcium tassinate, canola oil, and as well as uh, vitamins and minerals that are in really cheap forms that are often, you know, not bioavailable at all at like best case scenario or actually damaging to human physiology in, in the worst case scenario. And these compounds are put in feeds. We're, we're feeding corn syrup, fortified corn syrup, to patients we're trying to get well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus two extra meals. Because when you're eating nothing but sugar, you, you need to eat quite a bit. So, um, yeah, that's something I really am passionate about changing. I really want to influence hospital nutrition. And... I think we can all agree that you don't feed somebody with a brain injury or any injury for that matter, corn syrup for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for That just seems so incongruous. And, you know, I don't know if you researched the history of that or not or how that got started, but that just seems so incongruous with the mission of helping someone become well. First, do no harm, right? Do no harm. Yeah. yeah. Like actually help create us, create an environment for recovery and wellness. You well, know, we can go on and on about first do no harm and the ideas behind the prescribing medications for just about everything, you know, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's essentially what I tell people is that drugs are tools and they are like tools can be really useful at times. Tools can be very dangerous too if you don't know what you're doing. Like if you try to use a bandsaw and you don't know what you're doing, you could saw your arm off, right? Right. Um, but then, but then they can also be extremely useful. Like, you know, the 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 chair I'm sitting in wouldn't be here without good tools and and skilled people using them. So we. Um, You know, the idea with prescription meds is that those tools are being prescribed by somebody who knows what they're doing, right? And we put doctors on a pedestal of like, oh, they know, they know what's best. And it's like, do they? Um, And this, and is it right for you? You know, considering that, that many doctors spend, um, spend, I don't know, 12 minutes with each patient. and they they feel that that's enough to decide to put somebody on a medication, not for you know not not until they get better because that's really not the goal of a medication. The goal of a medication is to have you on that medication for the rest of your life, and you'll see this over and over again that this is a case like when you're when people are prescribed a medication often they're prescribed that medication forever, you know? And they might renew it every couple of years or they'll, they'll say like, um, this prescription expires at this time, but then it gets renewed and renewed and renewed. And uh, I was talking to my buddy about how like the business of, of medicine, because it is the business, you know? Um, and it starts with, with uh it starts with education so when we bring in industry to educate like in so much 
of our education that our doctors are receiving or our MDs are receiving is funded by pharmaceutical companies. No conflict of interest, clearly. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to see how our entire medical system has been hijacked. And um, it's really sad, you know? So this is where we have the opportunity to take control back. I am so about patient empowerment. And that's, that's where I was with everything. I, I was, uh, I got to a point where they, they were basically telling me like, okay, you're good, go on. And I was like, yeah, I'm not good, right? Um, I'm, I have a lot of things to, to get back together. So I began to research everything I could to improve my, my recovery. I began to empower myself. I began to study like my life depended on it because it did. And this is what I am, I encourage everyone to do what they can, they can, without somebody else um, doing anything, things that they can do, patient empowerment. What can we control? We can control the food we eat. We can, con and that's, that's like the biggest thing is we can control the food we eat. Um, the other stuff, you know, the air we breathe, we can get a purifier in our homes or plants around, things of that sort. Um, what we put on our skin, that as well is, is what goes into us. And we can control that um, largely, but it's so hard to find quality products. So what I did, I ended up making my own deodorant, which I still use. I, I used to sell it at the farmer's market, actually. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I made my own deodorant. Um, I began making my own tooth powder. Um, I began, uh, yeah, and I, I began to just move away from, from everything because I had a leaky blood-brain barrier. Leaky is an understatement. I damaged the hell out of my blood-brain barrier, right? So anything, any toxins in my bloodstream were going to cross into my blood, my, my, my brain, you know? And so I wanted to protect my brain, which meant I need to clean up a lot. And this is, uh, this is where I recognize what I could do. Patient empowerment, what I could do. Um, and I began to implement things. And um, so I work with, with uh, clients to, to self-empower, to do what we can to improve our circumstances, um, whether injured, whether doing well, but just want to like step it up a few notches. I'm, I'm all about helping people to empower themselves and learn skills rather than rely on pills. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you, in your own journey, actually, when you were telling your story, when you first started, you were talking about how um, you were offered pills, but that actually I got the sense and maybe you can clarify this. I got the sense that like, it was the discomfort you were going through that propelled you into finding a solution. Like it's, it's like, it's not working the way I want it to work, or I'm not feeling the way I want to feel, or I'm feeling, I feel pain. So now it makes, it makes me want to go do, you know, find a solution. Whereas if, if we just sort of medicate and we just cover up the symptoms, then where's the motivation to do anything about the root cause? Like, where's the motivation to actually change at a, at a fundamental level, something we're doing? Did you hear me? Did I get lost? Yeah, you were gone. Oh. You were gone that whole time. Dang. Um, yeah, I, I, I got the, I, the impression that you were saying something right on. I know, I was. Let me say it again. I don't know if anybody <laughs> right, heard me. So like, my thing was that I got the sense when you were telling your story about how you maybe were offered some pain pills like to cover up the symptoms, but that actually – it's like if you go through the discomfort, it propels you into a solution because it, it hurts. So you want to find a fix. 
you want to solve it, the root of the problem, mm -hmm. because it's you're in pain, you're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But if you just sort of like take the pill and cover up the symptom, then nothing's getting fixed. You're just sort of coping and like covering it up. Mm -hmm. But you're not healing it at the deep level. I mean, is that is that a correct assessment of? So what 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 I've uh, what I've discovered and what I talk about is that the purpose of pain. What is the purpose of pain? Um, you know, we actually have a reflex arc um, built into our spinal cord, where if we like when we put our hand on a hot stove. We, autom and we automatically come back and like retract. And that signal doesn't even need to hit our brain to happen. We can be like, you know, we can know that we're gonna touch something hot and be like, I'm going to override that because I know it's coming, right? So for example, if we have a, a dinner plate that's, that's hot, but we're gonna take it over to the table and we don't wanna like drop it, then we'll override that. So what's happening with the reflex arc where pain happens and then we're pre-wired to avoid that pain, to withdraw from that pain. So, um, but then we can override it with our brain. So the point of pain, it's not good, it's not bad. The point of pain is to get our attention. Nothing more, nothing less. It's there to get our attention. And when we turn off the ability to, um, or the attention getting nature of it, when we numb the pain, then it, we, don't, we don't give attention to what is crying out for attention, you know? So what I recognized while I was in the hospital was I mean I I woke up in a white walled room with tubes protruding from every orifice like had one in my nose had had a, a tube coming out here had a, a tube uh, I had a catheter I had tubes IVs everywhere right and I was freaked out yeah um, I bet that's kind of freaky wake up like that I, I thought i honestly thought i was being abducted by sick and twisted experimenters like giving me psychoactive medications because i didn't feel right you know and so i was like all right i i realized that they were giving me pills and i was like okay i need to stop those because i didn't even recognize like what a brain injury felt like. Nobody knows what a brain injury feels like unless they've experienced one, right? So I was uh, so I need to get off these pills. So, you know, I know when they said, are you in pain? I was like, yeah, I'm in terrible pain. They would give me pills. And I was like, what if I told them I wasn't in pain? So they came by, you in pain? And I'm like, no, I'm all right. But I definitely need a sleeping pill if you got that. Because <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know how I'm going to bed with this pain. Um, I didn't say that part. But they, then they didn't give me they didn't give me the medication, right? And I was like, that's how I can avoid the medication. Okay. So that was early on. I I am very excited that I'm the kind of person that was like, nope. I don't want to be dependent on anything. I don't want to be dependent at all, ever, right? Um, so especially with medications, losing that dependence early on meant going through something painful, but it also meant uh, controlling that and finding tools to actually help the situation rather than to cover up what was getting my attention. That's such a brave thing to do. I just really want to recognize you for that. That's such a brave thing to do to face that much pain and fear and discomfort, like not knowing is, is this going to be fixed? When, how long, <laughs> what, how long is this experience going to last? You know, is it going to get better? <laughs> you know, right. like 
there's a threshold Dang. like with uh, there was definitely times where the pain was too much like when i had my throat surgery you can kind of see i have a scar here yeah so they did a throat surgery on me because my my trachea was occluded and so it was narrowed your your trachea is about the width of your wrist and mine had shrunken down to the size of a drinking straw wow and so what they did is they they slit my throat they sawed my trachea in two spots and they took out the piece that was that was narrowed and they sewed the two ends back together and I mean, it's amazing. They slit my throat, saved my life. Wow. And I mean, I okay, so I want to give props. Respect. Like Western so medicine. So much respect. So yeah. much respect. Totally. They can cut you up and save your life. You know, they so, can do that. I'd be dead it's amazing. without that. It is. It is absolutely amazing what has been done. And I, I am so appreciative for all of it. Uh, Dr. Brett Miles, who, who performed that surgery, is a hero of mine because he saved my life, right? I wouldn't yeah. be here talking if it wasn't for him. So um, so we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. No, like we're, not at By all. any means. But I think, you know, Kevin, you really hit on something important, I think, is I think in an effort to help people potentially and also to make money, you know, an industry was born to help people not feel pain. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what you're saying today is that is causing greater suffering because mm -hmm. we're missing our body's clues that tell us we need to work mm -hmm. on something because we're yeah. literally ignoring it and saying, la, 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 <laughs> I could take my Advil, you know? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not saying it's really important to have those tools. Um, like I said, medications are tools. Um, so reducing the pain is absolutely important at times. There, there's a threshold, like I was saying, I had my throat slit and my trachea saw it. Like you I've never experienced pain, pain that. like that. It, <laughs> yeah. was, it was crazy. It was like, it, it was the worst pain. Any, but I, I mean, it was just something so foreign to me. You're like, it was extremely uncomfortable. And I think it's important to, to get to a place where you can tolerate it for sure. So, and then you build that threshold bit by bit. And then the main reason to ride that line where it's like, I can handle it. All right. Um, I can handle this much. Um, and if it's more than that, I'm definitely going to like take something to reduce it a bit. But, um, but if you take, you know, it, knowing that there are consequences to getting depend to becoming dependent on this medication, and the more you take of a medication, the more you need to take of a medication. Um, if you can taper and constantly keep an eye on keeping it as the minimum dose you need, that is that is super powerful and no doctor knows what that dose is you know what that dose is. yeah exactly no doctors inside of you no and in 12 minutes there's no way they're going to get all the information that they need to make some right. kind of diagnosis when you're living 24 by 7 in that body and you 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 know if you're paying attention to it and you're paying attention to your experiences you're the one who has all the information your life That's leaves right. clues all over the place. <laughs> yep. Find your so, intuition, yeah. listen to it, um, ride with it, and uh, and believe in yourself. And feed your brain while you're at it. it really, feed your really brain. Helps. Yeah, and be honest with yourself. Like I actually had a friend um, who was talking with me, and she's uh, feeling some anxiety and things like that. So we just started exploring some of the basics. And it, it was like right within the first five minutes of the conversation. Yeah, I well, I cut out soy in my coffee, but now I'm just having my coffee like three or four times a day. <laughs> like, okay, right there. Like, cut out the coffee, mm. you know? So we got to start being honest with ourselves about what we're doing, you know, and mm -hmm. not doing. 
if mm -hmm. we want it, you know, if we're having a physical challenge or we're having some pain or some things going on, like really go back to the basics and be honest. Like, what are you actually doing? You got to have extra awareness, which means you can't tune it out. You can't tune it out. You got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. I love that, Kevin. Thank you for bringing that point. And you guys, like, we just kind of like, we just skimmed the surface uh, today. <laughs> like, the interview is like amazing um, that Kevin and I did together. Uh, it was released earlier in May as part of the summit, but it's going to be re-released uh, for free June 1st to 2nd. So go ahead and sign up at, uh, you know, my website, Skills Not Pills Movement. Dot com. Don't forget that part. It's skillsnotpillsmovement.com. And then you'll you'll be able to get it on the replay period, which is coming up not too not too far from now. And in between now and then is a whole bunch of great interviews. Right now we've got Nikisha mm -hmm. Hammond, Dr. Nikisha Hammond talking about ADHD and how kids are way over prescribed medication for ADHD. And there's lots of solutions for that. That's that's on the down low. We got Sharon Saylor coming out, I think tomorrow, and and her interview um, is she had autoimmune. Uh, disease and uh, and she's resolved that and she has this a program called auto autoimmune hour where she interviews like amazing people she should have you on her mm. show anyway yeah so I I love it so you guys you, you're gonna you're gonna just be inspired like having super inspiring so is all these other people like they're amazing and and I just get to sit back and like you know hold space <laughs> so <laughs> we're amazing people so thank you so much for being part of this Kevin thank you Carrie I appreciate you. I, you know, I wish you lots of luck with your, with your movement in the world and especially with, you know, improving hospital nutrition. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this video gets in the hands of people who are influencers in that realm and can, and can make some things happen to improve yeah. that situation. Yeah, me too. And if you guys want to follow me, uh, I'm at feed a brain on yeah, all feed a brain. videos. Um, Check out my book, Feed a Brain, or How to Feed a Brain. Um, my website is feedabrain.com. And uh, yeah, come come join the adventure. Awesome. Happen. Oh, and yeah. speaking of adventure, I also have a podcast. <gasps> Adventures. The Adventures in Brain Injury Podcast. Uh, and that's on iTunes, right? It is on iTunes, yeah. Yeah, so that's on iTunes. It's free. You can, you can listen to that. Can have Some of the smartest and most inspirational people I've ever even heard of. I get to interview. It's it's like what you're doing. I love it. It's, it's the, isn't it the best thing? It is. Like, it's like one of my favorite things. And just like yeah. I, this is working for me, people. This is like I'm having a conversation. <laughs> this is work. Yeah. How this awesome is, is that? Yeah. It's yeah. Get to, you get to get yourself in a really awesome spot where you get to influence and, and inspire. It's a wonderful thing. And you know what, Kevin, doesn't it make it all worthwhile? Like everything you went through? Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't even matter if it didn't. Like this is where we're at. So <laughs> I, so I mean, I'm just, I'm constantly grateful and appreciative of what, what I have, what I'm able to do. And, um, and the gifts that my my situation has given me it's taken away a lot it's also given me superpowers that i never would have had it has given otherwise. you a whole direction in life that you didn't even know you were going to take totally had no idea. <laughs> i know that one <laughs> mm -hmm. from check writer to soul guide who would have thought you know <sighs> anyway well, this is fun. So thank you so much for being on and, and thank you everybody for listening and share it out to anybody you know who's struggling and might need some inspiration because certainly, um, you know, spend a little time with Kevin. You'll be inspired that anything is possible. Look how he's, he had a 10% chance of recovery and now look at him. He's on the road. He's, he's going to be speaking in a couple of days. He's speaking at one place and then another place. And now I'm going to DC. So right he's now going I'm to DC. Chicago. And I'm, uh, I'm going to two conferences here in Chicago, um, uh, autism one, and then I'm going to, um, neuro, what is it? Uh, neuro rehabilitation and visual processing. And then I'm going to DC for the federal interagency conference on TBI. And, uh, then the, the bright, um, consumer, uh, not consumer, uh, the, the bright, which stands for brain injury, 
uh, rehabilitation, improvement of the transition uh, study that I've been a part of for some time. So I'm really excited about it. That's awesome. Look how, I mean, just imagine like from catatonic, you know, not able to do very much to like, wow, like around the country and over here, over there and everywhere talking about this and running your own podcast and publishing a book and being a thought leader. And, you know, that's, that's huge. So anything is possible, people, whatever you're experiencing right now might be uncomfortable, but that pain has got a message, right, Kevin? Pain's got a message. Got a message. All right, people, thank you for tuning in. Share it out to anybody you think you'd need it. And we'll see you next time on Skills Not Pills. Thanks, Carrie.